So when we talk about the, the global climate models, these models produce very useful climate information, but very useful climate information on a larger scale due to the resolution that these models have. So the scale generally will produce for, for a region like the Caribbean, which has small islands, it will produce good information that is useful on the regional scale. But then when you begin to actually get to information specific to the small islands, which are generally smaller than the grid box, or so if you think about the Eastern Caribbean islands, a single Eastern Caribbean island falls within a grid box, so is represented as water within these, general, these global climate models. Um, or even the larger Caribbean islands are represented as one or at most two grid boxes. So you'll get information for just one or two grid boxes. This poses a limitation for the small islands of the Caribbean region and small islands in general. And so you don't end up with refined, finer scale, sub-country scale information for the small islands. And this is a limitation. So the whole process of downscaling then is trying to take the information from the, the, that you can get from the large scale and somehow relate it to the, the local scale or the, the, the island scale or even the sub-island scale. And the, 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 going through the whole process of downscaling therefore is delivering that kind of information that is a little bit more precise, well, at least includes the island. <laughs> um, and, and, and then, as I suggest, even going to sub-island scale, because life does take place on the sub-island scale, you know, the local scale. It doesn't, it doesn't take place at the, the big grid box scale. So downscale is very important for the small islands of the region. So downscaling generally um, is divided into two kind of, of, of methodologies. There is the dynamical downscaling, which is the equivalent of doing the modeling that, that is done at the, the large scale, but doing it at the finer scale resolution. Of course, the limitations uh, are that you can't divide the world up into really, really small grid boxes and then do the whole world. <laughs> so dynamical downscaling, you first have to define the domain um, that you are going to, to run the model over. In, in our case, we define a kind of a Caribbean intra-America's domain, so we limit the modeling to that domain. But of course, you feed in to the boundaries of that domain the output of the, the large-scale the, the large models. So it's the larger-scale model information that drives then the finer-scale model. And that's the dynamical downscaling. So you're essentially doing the modeling at a finer scale, but over a limited domain fed in with the information at the boundaries. And then there are usually statistical approaches that you can use as well, statistical downscaling. With statistical downscaling, I think there are multiplicity of methods. The kind of methods we are using are those that, where you make a relationship between the large scale and the local scale. So if you have the data at the local scale and you can create a statistical relationship between what happens on the large scale and the local scale, assuming of course that the local scale is driven by the in, in a sense, by the large scale. And then you utilize that statistical relationship, for example, in a projection for projections, because you can then project the large scale, utilize the statistical relationship that you have made with the local scale and derive information at the local scale. Um, so both, both are being employed um, for the Caribbean region um, because they both provide useful information.